Welcome to the Voice of Islam. The Voice of Islam is a weekly radio program organized by the Islamic Council of Jamaica, the umbrella organization for the Muslim community in Jamaica, to propagate the message of Islam, dispel the common misconceptions about Islam, and facilitate a medium to provide the Islamic perspective on topical issues and alternative solutions. You may contact the Islamic Council of Jamaica at 648 Nine five four five. That's six four eight nine five four five. You are listening to the voice of Islam. Before we begin, let's take a few minutes to listen to the recitation of verses selected from the final revelation to mankind, Al Quran. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على أنفسكم أو الوالدين والأقربين إن غنيا أو فقيرا فالله أولى بهما فلا تت تَبِعُوا الْهَوَى تَعْدِلُوا وَإِن تَلْوُوا أَوْ تُعْرِضُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا I seek refuge with the Almighty Creator from the devil who is the accursed. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. O you who believe, be upholders of justice, witnesses for Almighty God Allah. Even though, even if it is against your own selves or your parents or your kinsmen, whether one may be rich or poor, Allah is a better caretaker of both. So do not follow your desires lest you may swerve away from justice. If you twist or avoid justice, then know that Allah is all aware of what you do. You are listening to the Voice, the voice of, Islam. of Islam. Very briefly, an important topic. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this a topic extremely important to himself. And it is the aspect of adi and twist, justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made justice of paramount importance in this deen, in all aspects. To an extent where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have forbidden myself from injustice. I have made haram upon myself. So we know many times people say that yes, Allah can do anything He wills. And Allah says that I have made it prohibited forbidden for me to be unjust. This is how important it is. Allah mentions this, that I have prohibited myself from being unjust, regardless of what mankind does on the earth, regardless of mankind's ingratitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that everyone is due proportion. Allah says, La ظُلْمَ الْيَوْمِ Allah says, on the day of judgment, when we have the wicked, we have the oppressive, we have the righteous. When we have all these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La ظُلْمَ الْيَوْمِ That indeed, on that day, there will be no injustice, clear balance. Allah says, regardless if this was an oppressor or this was someone who sinned today but didn't sin tomorrow or someone who was always righteous, Allah says there is no bias. One of the fundamental principles in Islam is this aspect of justice. 
where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized it in Surah 49 in Surah Hujurat, which is a surah that speaks to how can we have cohesive societies. What are the traits of successful communities? And amongst them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that even when there are disputes, even when one of the party, clear cut you know that that party is wrong, that this side is these are the ones who are upon the correct, Allah says, Lil Adli wa aqsifu. That ensure that not only you are just, but aqsifu, that you are balanced. That you are fair, subhanAllah. Allah mentions this because justice is of paramount importance. There is a concept a few years ago that persons came up called the word social justice. But subhanAllah, if we study this theme, this was embedded in Islam from the beginning of time. And this is why you find that even when it comes to our financial well-being, that the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned that we must be concerned with humanity. Justice is not just Muslim to Muslim. Justice is with all, including all aspects of creation, not just humanity as well, but even to the animals, even to creation. All of this must be extended. Where at the time the companions at one time believed when the Prophet ﷺ kept on speaking about the rights of the neighbor, they wondered if the neighbor would be included in inheritance. Because every time the neighbor was mentioned, this level of fairness, this level of concern, it is embedded within this deen. And this is why, subhanAllah, do we even practice this on a daily basis? Do we know the condition of our neighbors? Our neighbors, most likely, are not Muslims. You are listening to the voice of Islam. But Justice Prophet did not say your neighbors who are Muslims. It's open to our neighbors whether they are atheists or whatever faith they may belong to. Whatever race they may belong to. That in the last khutbah, the Prophet mentioned, which was just for a few minutes, Imagine when we get time to speak and someone give us the podium, that international podium. We are on the media, we get 15 minutes. We are going to choose the most important points that we want everyone to hear. And subhanAllah, there is so much about Islam that can be mentioned. And in that last sermon, which we have the translation there, we don't need to expand upon the last khutbah where the Prophet ﷺ emphasized, be just with your women, be just with the orphan, be just with that which you are being given with the trust. So someone has entrusted you, ensure that you do not betray the trust and understand that justice goes beyond race, beyond ethnicity. That no Arab is better than a non-Arab, no black better than a white. And he continued, mentioning the importance of equity, please, and the importance of adl, justice. For Muslims, are we truly just with one another? Are we balanced? We can look at ourselves and say, you know, when I'm having a conversation with this Muslim who is my friend, I will relate to them in that particular way on this issue. But this disbeliever or this other Muslim I will not have that conversation in that manner. I will not do it like that because I don't like him or he doesn't like me or we don't see eye to eye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ensure you are just even if it's against your own selves. We hear about this. But how many of us do this? Many times in our lives we try to put ourselves in a position that we ha have an advantage. So if we hear that, you know what, that they are giving out a million dollars to persons out there. And even if we got it, we are going to try to find a way to get another portion. You know what, it's a million to a family, but they don't know my wife or my brother. So guess what, I'm going to send my brother, I'm going to send my wife. They don't know. Allah says that be just, even if it is against your own self, meaning that if you realize the repercussions 
of saying that I was the one that is wrong, so I must be imprisoned, I must be punished. Allah says, if you are a believer, be just. Don't try to weasel your way out of it. Don't try to say it is this brother that caused it, or you know that something wrong is happening. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in a hadith that we all know that when you see a wrong, when you see injustice, correct it with your tongue. And if you are unable to fix that injustice, subhanAllah, first correct it with your hands. If you can't do that, you don't have the power, the strength, speak out against it. And thirdly, if you can't, Ad'aful Iman, the weakest of faith, is to hate it within your heart. Oh Muslims, many of us don't even hate it. Where is our Iman? We don't even hate it. We keep quiet to injustice. We see this happening on a daily basis at the masjid. How people treat children. How people treat elderly. How Muslims treat one another. How Muslims treat disbelievers. How brothers treat their wives. We see this on a daily basis and we know this. And we don't even hate it in our hearts. Ikhwan, the Prophet ﷺ said the weakest of Iman is to hate injustice in your heart. Oh Muslims, let's ask ourselves, do we have any Iman? Do we have any faith whatsoever? Because if we don't hate it, and if the weakest is to hate it, the weakest is to hate it. We see it, it doesn't matter to us that brother it is him and his family. Let them deal with that. I will deal with my family. So yes, I know what is happening in that home. I know what is happening at the masjid. I see what is happening in our communities and in our societies, but it doesn't affect me because it's not my family. You know what, I'm saving myself and my family. Oh Muslims, <laughs> where is the saving you are saving? When the weakest of Iman is to hate injustice in your heart, it is not just in your home, O oh Muslims. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was always righteous. Do we believe he went to Kaid Hira until he was at the age of 40 because he was focusing on himself and his family? He was concerned for humanity. He saw the social injustice in society. O oh, Muslim, justice is of paramount importance in this deen regardless of the person, the individual. So if you see a non-Muslim oppressing another non-Muslim, and we don't see it necessary to change it, then, O oh Muslims, are we Muslims? Are we those who are submissive to Allah? Are we those who believe in Allah? Are we believers? Because this least of belief is to hate injustice within our hearts. Let's reflect upon this, O oh Muslims. You are listening to the voice of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah. My reverse story, well, it started in the States, in Florida. Um, I was out with my cousin and his friends, and uh, at that time I was wearing a, a gold cross around my neck. I love gold. And we were at a gas station and him just he looked over and said like what does that cross mean to me? Um at that point I just kinda related what I was told, you know, Jesus died for our sins and so I just wear this cross because it's it's something we do, you know. People all over the world must have on crosses. I mean, some don't necessarily know about the, the fundamentals or anything about the cross aspect and just have it on because it's a tradition that we do that. So when we reached, when we got back home, he gave me a book. It was a book called Muslim Christian Dialogue. And it was a simple book, thin book. But it was so deep because the 
the conversation that was being had was between a Muslim and a Christian. And the Christian answered the Muslim's question because <clears throat> I've never heard a Christian answering questions like that. He was so honest. For instance, he would say, yeah, I know how it sounds, but that's what we were taught. Yes, I know how, yeah, but that's what we were taught. So he was being completely honest. And when he said that, basically he was admitted that whatever topic they were talking about at the time didn't make any sense, but that's what they were taught. And they held on to it. They just believed it, even though it never made any sense. So he came back later that night and saw me still reading it. And he, he remarked, yo, you're still reading it? So I didn't like to read before that. Um, so after that, I couldn't. I tried to read as much books as I could. I could get my hands on about Islam. And years and years and years later, I mean over like ten years later, um, things happened, and um, I saw an Imam that I knew from. Uh, one time I went to, I went to a Juma one time. Um, my niece was born. And I didn't know nothing about Jum. I just knew that that was the day Muslims go to her. So when my niece was born, I went there. And he led me in prayer. I was Muslim yet. And I didn't take my shahada yet. And I didn't go back, as I said, years and years. And then I saw him coming out of a, out of a shop, a building he owned. And um, I was like, yo, you're the imam from such and such. And he was like, yeah, such and such, where are you from? And he said, you don't remember me? And I reminded him, he said, where are you going? I was going home, such and such. He said, hop in the car. So I went in the car with him. And coming down Hope Road, on the roads in um, Kingston, Jamaica here. Um, coming down Hope Road, I took my shahada in the car. Tears and all. I mean, alhamdulillah. Um, the greatest thing I've ever done. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me with Islam. Alhamdulillah. Um, so yeah, that's my story in a nutshell. Um, obviously the interest because if you need any more information, let me know. <laughs> you are listening to the voice of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. To all the Muslims listening and to all my non-Muslim, um, friends or relatives listening, whatever time of day or night they are listening now, good morning, good afternoon or good night. Right. My name is Muhammad Abdul Aleem Dawes, Jamaican born, yeah, born and raised downtown Kingston, yeah, born to um, an, I want to say a Cuban father, Jamaican mother, a uh, mother of um, what we call a coolie royal descent, her mother being maroon and her father being Indian, one of those who came from India in early days. Now, I'm doing this as a, um, as a tribute or contribution to what's the program that is um, being aired for people who have reverted to Islam because I was really raised as a Catholic, yeah, in a household that was filled with Christians only. Um, as a youth going to St. Aloysius Primary, I used to be very, very, very uh, dedicated to the church and to godliness, yeah. But somehow, from the age of about six, I started to have questions. And uh, this is how I knew that I was not supposed to be, um, at today's age, having anything to do with the church. Uh, there was a teacher then, who was a nun, and she was the first primary teacher for me. But somehow, along the way, all the teachings seemed to be around. Everything seemed to be centered around trying to make us feel that the whites were superior. As a matter of fact, in those early days, there was a saying, because I'm a 60s child, yeah? If you are white, you are all right. If you are brown, you can stick around. But if you are black, step back. There was no bank or any 
conglomerate place that you could go and find any black person working inside. So if you went to the bank, the only way you'd find a black person there is the blue seamed police officer would be on the outside or on the inside standing as the guard for the bank. The other black people would come in maybe an half an hour or so before the bank closed. They were the janitors. But it was only high color, what we call high class. So I'm just saying what we call, yeah? Because I don't see them as that. High class, high colored people who used to work in the banks. Certain high schools, we were not privileged to go. I always had a search to identify with something that made me feel good about myself. Yeah? But all we could have heard was the black was this and the black was that. The black cat was a bad cat. You are listening to the voice of Islam. So then, in the turn of the century, in the 70s, when it was coming around to that election time when um, a gentleman known as Michael Manley to give us that kind of feeling of... Um, sense of belonging just around then the built up then i had started to search and search black books doing history about this and that and then there was a book in school i can't remember reader really what it was that would have that teach us about alibaba somehow i had a love for alibaba and the way they dressed and um you know the way they carried themselves and all the stories about alibaba and the different people from Egypt, so much so I thought Egypt was in the sky. I never knew until my later years in life that Egypt was somewhere on the ground here. Yeah, I thought Egypt was in the sky. I never thought there was an Egyptian who looked like me. Yeah, because I was never taught that. And then now, as I say, I embraced because of that and because of listening to Muhammad Ali. I think most people would know that I'm a former boxer. I was in the gym at about age 10 or somewhere there, just about the same time that I embraced um, the Elijah Muhammad teachings of um, Farrakhan who was teaching it, Nation of Islam. Yeah, but I still had some of that feeling inside of me and some of the beliefs stuck with me. Now, on my trip to Barbados, 1983, there was a gentleman that I would see every morning that we were coming from the garrison savannah where we went to exercise. And he would be dressed in an orange outfit with a turban, but he would be standing one place, always seemed to be focused on me, and I focused my eyes on him, watching him. But somehow, he never seemed to move or anything. Now, there was one morning I told myself, I am going out to ask that gentleman, why was he looking at me? I never saw that man again after that. But it impacted on me so much so that when I came back to Jamaica, all these years, I thought a Muslim was somebody who was clean-shaven with a part in their head, yeah? And in a jacket and tie. But as I say, I grew up downtown Kingston, I was coming across North Street and there was a brother dressed in a, what we call a tube and a turban. Yeah, the difference with his turban and that turban was that he had a round cap on, which we know as a kufi, and um, his turban had a string. That gentleman I saw, his turban was orange, bright orange, with a point in the air. Well, I went up to the gentleman out of the blue and say, Assalamu Alaikum. And he responded, Wa Alaikum Salam. How are you doing, brother? I said, I'm okay. You know, and you? He said, Alhamdulillah. But that's never heard that word before, Alhamdulillah. And he said, um, what masjid do you attend? Masjid, I never heard that before. So he realized then that I um, was sort of unlearned. You are listening to the voice of Islam. And he said, um, where did you take Shada? Shada. I don't know anything about Shada. You know? So then now he said to me, All right, listen, you need to know a little more about Islam. We are at um we were at Kensington Crescent at the time. And when I went there, I sat there, there was one brother I saw, he's now deceased and no longer with us. May Allah have mercy upon his soul. And but uh, he was in the masjid at the time. I came in and we started to talk and rap. 
Then a brother came in who I knew from um, Elijah Muhammad's time, Brother Muhammad Ali, and then Brother Abbas. And by the time they came in and started to talk to me and ask me and tell me, I tell them, yeah, I came to take Shahada. Yeah, man, I took Shahada. Then the following day was Ramadan. I started fasting just the same. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you all for listening to The Voice of Islam, a weekly radio program organized by the Islamic Council of Jamaica to propagate the message of Islam, dispel the common misconceptions about Islam, and facilitate a medium to provide Islamic perspective on topical issues and alternative solutions. Remember, you may collect a free Quran, yes, a free Quran by emailing us sending a text message or visiting any of our locations. Please send in your questions and comments to islamradiojm at gmail.com. That's islamradiojm at gmail.com. Or by text message to 892-1350. That's 892-1350. You may also visit our Facebook page facebook.com slash Islamic Council of Jamaica or find us on Instagram at ICOJ underscore official or you may listen to a past episode on our YouTube channel Islamic Council of Jamaica. You may also visit any of the following locations. Islamic Council of Jamaica, 24 Camp Road, Kingston 4. Masjidul Aziz, Portmore Central Plaza, West Tradeway, Portmore. Masjidul Rahman, Windsor Road, Spanish Town, Islamic Dawa Center, 1 Makati Street, Montego Bay, Masjid Al Hakim, 138 Main Street, Ochrios, Masjid Al Sabr, Albany, St. Mary, Masjid Hussein, 3 Miles River, Westmoreland, Masjid Al Haq, New Green Road, Mandeville, Masjid Al Nur, Port Maria, St. Mary, Masjid Al Ihsan, West End Road, Negril, Masjid Al Taqwa, Newell, St. Elizabeth, Masjid Ibrahim, Riversdale, St. Catherine. Masjid As-Sakina, 26 Miriam Way, Montego Bay. Peace be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>